Welcome back again, Sim Chronicles of a Sim Racer. This is, again, I'm still <clears throat> monkeying around with resolutions for streaming, trying to make sure I have, uh, have it right, and uh, it seems as though it's still a little um, fuzzy. I'm not sure why yet, but uh, just, you know, please bear with me as I familiarize myself with um, the nature of how this, this stuff works. Um, this race here is at Long Beach. It's an IMSA multi-class race. And I think this is one of the last race at this particular track. I run the IMSA multi-class um, season on iRacing on, uh, on the open servers not part of any specific league or anything like that although perhaps I should find a league where I could race with other people who are much more adept at sim racing or driving um, in general so yeah we're sitting on the grid I never qualify for these races for whatever reason I you know start wherever I end up in terms of the order and some of the times I start from the pit lane to avoid wrecks which I seem to be well acquainted with here in the last few races especially at this track so perhaps maybe I should change my perspective and because I probably may be inviting onto myself wrecks which subsequently keep my I rating low which keeps me trapped in the lower splits which keeps me getting wrecked i attempted this race nine times and every single time i got wrecked by someone else doing a mistake and collecting me now at first i got really really frustrated because i could not understand why these guys keep wrecking up but i realized that if you're in the bottom split the reason why these guys are in the bottom sweep, including myself, is because they probably not have not really honed their racecraft. And so that's the reason why our I rating are low, which relegate us to the bottom split. Although I tend to think I'm a relatively decent um, sim racer. Nevertheless, my I rating went, uh, I, I was all the way up to 30, not that, I mean 3,000, not that 3,000 is anything to brag about, but I was at 3,000 at some point, and then I started coming back again into these open servers, and as a result, I started getting wrecked. Yeah, so anyways, like I'm stuck in this lower tiers, and like I said, which keeps me stuck in the loop of losing I rating, gaining a few, losing C right here. This makes no sense. Uh, on the first lap, we should be more conscientious of the car. Um, that it takes a while, or maybe a lap or so, to get the tires up to temperature, proper operating temperature. And so I think a lot of us are driving this high-powered cars and really haven't refined our driving skills on the lesson smaller, um, not so fast cars. Yeah, I like the speed also, I like the sense of speed, but you have to be able to control the cars at those speeds. And what I find on this low split is a lot of guys jump into the LMPH cars. They can't drive the Miata well, but think that they'll be able to handle a monster like the LMPH. See, I just kissed the wall here a little bit, and got a little bit too much curb coming up to that corner. Anyway. I am pretty decent with my driving. I have relatively good racecraft. I'm not too optimistic, over optimistic when it comes to making a move and having to go at someone. I am more inclined to study and see over the course of several laps where am I quicker, if I am indeed quicker. And if I am, I will try to formulate a pass as safely as possible so as not to affect yours or my race because it's more important for me to finish the race have an experience, a good battle with someone else on track instead of trying to do some kamikaze over optimistic move on the first lap 
going for the first corner and it is taking up half the field because why? Right? So a lot of these things doesn't make sense to me, but people do it and so it's not my place to judge them, but to judge and assess my own performance and what I need to do to increase my I rating so that I could move up and enjoy the music of the battle and know that I won't be taken out on first lap by somebody who think that they I heard in Senna or Michael Schumacher from one of those very, very skilled uh, races. Anyway, this is my ninth attempt, I believe, at Long Beach. And I'm not on the limit. I'm taking my time through these corners. I'm trying to hit my marks as best as I can. And I'm not tracking out as much as I probably should. Uh, because I'm really not 100% comfortable in the LMPH yet, especially in the braking events. Um, it's a very, very, very powerful car, and, but it has a lot of downforce. And uh, yeah, so I really enjoy that this car. Before the LMPH, my favorite was the LMPH. But since I've had an opportunity to drive a few times the LMPH, I find that LMP2 is not as enjoyable anymore. Although it's a very, very good car, I think it's just not as enjoyable to me as the LMPH. Now, I was talking about other people taking out, taking me out in the race. Have I taken out anybody in the race? I can't say that I have. Um, for as long as I can remember, I don't think that. So optimistic that I missed and take somebody else in the process. Um, I have made a few daring moves, but I was able to pull those off without um, uh, affecting anybody else's race. Uh, up to now. So, um, yeah, so anyway, this is my journey, of course, sim racing. It's one of the ways that I. I'd rather go to the track, but like I said before, consumables get quite expensive, and so I can't go to the track every time. I probably go maybe two or three times before, and uh, some high performance driving events. And when I run with Apex uh, Driving Academy here, I get to run with the advanced group because I think they have been going on on the track so I'm able to run with the advanced guys and be aware of controlling my car but not not that only but also be aware of other people on the track and I think that's what's missing here in some of these sim racing the lower splits and I think that's what relegates a lot of these guys to the lower splits is that in the process of driving the car even though we were racing each other right I am aware of what's going on around me not, I don't have just a myopic view of what's in front of me and so focused on just what's in front of me that I'm not seeing what's coming up behind me, I'm not seeing what's on the right side, I'm not seeing what's on the left, I'm not seeing what's about to happen ahead of me. There are two guys fighting to the nails and they overdrive in the car. I could sense that at some point there might be a wreck so I'm aware of what's going on so I can do whatever is necessary to avoid an accident or something like that, right? And what I've learned during the high performance driving event, it's okay that you could drive the car very well and very fast, right? A lot of times you're chest pounding and I oh my God, look at me, I, I top the time sheet. But for driving, for HPD high performance driving event, the most important thing, and it's stressed all the time, is track awareness. Track awareness, be aware of what's happening around you danger to everybody else and be very very predictable and I think that same thing translates to sim racing as well as real racing yeah I know you in close quarters battling hard with someone else in a GT3 or maybe another LMPH or LMP2 car but you have to be aware of what's going on around you and I'm constantly aware of seeing plus 
They have so many different ways to keep track of things. They have spotters. I use this software called uh, Blue Chief, and thanks to one of the sim racing fellas who uh, tipped me off about, you know, who uh, pointed me in the direction of Blue Chief. But that's a very invaluable piece of software because what it does is it keeps your head in the game. Right? It tells you what's going on. Like for right now, it's telling me slower car ahead. Slower class of car ahead. So I know I'm coming up on GTs. And it would also tell me that they might not see you because they're in a fightful position. So I know these guys are bad at battling tooth and nail. So coming up on them, I have to be very, very, very careful. Because they may not see me because they're in their own heated battle. That's being aware of what's going on around you. What's going on on track. Right? The, the crew chief... If I'm side by side with someone, it will tell me uh, someone to the right. Or if I'm in the middle, you're uh, three wide, you're in the middle. So all of these different things have given me a sense of awareness. I also realize that some of these guys don't have triple screens or VR. I get it. But at some point, I was on a single monitor too, and I wasn't wrecking people. And yes, of course, there's a bit of frustration at boiling over because I was on a single monitor at some point, and I was not wrecking people. Why? Because those same kind of software work on single monitors as it does in triple or VR. And, and, and sometimes the guys who are causing the wrecks are VR guys or triple monitor guys. So it's not the single monitor guys alone that is causing the issue. It's just that this is supposed to be a place for us all to have fun, drive hard and enjoy ourselves. And if you guys can't control the cars, don't get in it. Get in a Miata. Learn how to drive a Miata, understand racecraft, right? Understand the nuances of driving, hitting the brakes, how to use the brakes, how to apply the brakes, trail braking, all the different things, threshold braking. And then step up to a different car. Don't just jump into the fastest car because it's the fastest car and you can't handle it. But do a lot of practice offline and get used to the car on the track that you're going to be driving on so that you don't wreck those of us who are trying to have a good time because you can't handle the car. Yeah, there are, there are mistakes. We all made mistakes. And I had an unforced error right here in this corner. While leading this race, I turned, I spun the car right there. And because it's so tight, uh, I tried to get out of the way as quickly as I could. I think my car's coming around and I got to like, I was late in the race to five minutes left. I was leading the race. Yeah, so unforced errors happen, and I get it. But a lot of times, the errors that, gets, that I get collected up in are people not capable of driving the cars and so are not aware of what's going on early in the race, cold tires. I'm coming up on you, I'm driving an LMPH, you're driving an LMP2 or a T2 car. So what I do now on the radio is I tell, I, whenever I'm coming up on the person, I would say, hey, I'm coming up on you, give me the inside. Right, uh, or give me the outside, or whatever. So I let the GT or the slow car know, hey, I'm coming up on you. If I'm fighting with another LMPH, of course I can't say that, right? Because he's not going to move over for me. But if I'm quicker than the lesser cars, and I'm coming up and trying to make sure I maintain the gap that I have to whoever is behind me, or you know, try to catch whoever is ahead of me, then I will let the guys know. And my spotter tells me, class leader, so I know I'm not going to wreck the class leader, I don't want to wreck the class leader, so whenever I come up on the class leader, I say, hey, class leader, I'm coming up on you, I notice you're not fighting anyone, so just give me room so I can go through, or I'll tell him where I'm going to pass, because I'm driving a faster car, it's up to me to find a line around this lower GT, so I'll say, hey, I'm going to pass you on the right side, I'm going to pass you on the left side, give me the inside, give me the inside, and I'll say several times, until they get it, and even, even with that, they have guys with their egos on the circle. This one dude was talking about, that's saying, hey man, I'm coming up on you, you're the class leader, you're not fighting anyone, just give me the inside. Don't tell me how to drive, I know what I'm doing, I'm very much aware. I said, man, it's not for you, it's for me, because I've been wrecked so many times, I don't know who you are, from a hole in the wall. So I'm just letting you know that I'm in the vicinity, so you are aware of me. I don't know how well you can or cannot drive, it's just for my own peace of mind to make sure that I'm not putting my car in an area where you're not expecting me to be. You could be the best damn driver in the world, but if you didn't see me coming up on the inside of you, then we could cause a wreck. So it's nothing against you, so check your ego, 
and let's have a good time. And I think in time he understood it was not a knock against his ability to drive. You are the class leader at Long Beach in a GT3 car. You know what you're doing. You're doing something right. So it's not about trying to, um, you know, diminish another person's skills, but rather I'm trying to maximize my skill. And if I have tools available to me that will let you know where I am on track, then I will use those tools to the best of my ability in not a condescending or demeaning way, but rather in a way to enlighten you that I'm coming up on you and I'm going to have a go on the inside or the outside. That's all that is. This track, I have a love-hate relationship with this track. I hated Long Beach two months ago when I first drove this track. At the time, I was in VR. <laughs> and I love VR. VR is amazing, right? But I was using this, this um, HP Reverb 2 and it keeps crashing. It keeps crashing. Oh, and I said earlier that I have not done anything on the on the track to take anyone out. Let me let me um, correct that. I have indeed taken out someone, and it was because of VR. My VR headset went black on me in the midst of a race. So I, I completely lost sight of everything on track, and then I lost control of the car because I couldn't see anything. And so I ended up wrecking this dude, and I was all very, very, very apologetic. Um, once I got back on the server and let him know, hey man, it was VR, I'm so sorry my VR crashed. And then again, it happened during the 24, the 24 hours that they told me it didn't crash, but it started having some flashing or some going in and out, in and out, and I was on the back straight and they told me, good thing, I was on the back straight where there was a lot of open space and I didn't get into anybody's way, I didn't cause any crack, I was able to sort out the VR situation. So since then, I've gone to triples. And so this is the first time I've driven uh, Long Beach in my trip. With the VR, it seems better because in the VR, I was like so focused that I almost had like bridal vision. Everything was a blur around me except what I was doing in the moment. I was aware of other cars. I was aware of what I'm doing in terms of driving my own car, the lines. Um, I was taking through the corners, the braking application, the uh, you know hitting the apex track and all those kind of things. Very, very, very much aware of it. But it's like I was in a trance in the VR. I guess because the VR gives me more of a perspective of actually being in the VR. The triples, I'm in a semi-trance a little bit, uh, but not as much as I was in the VR. And so I prefer the VR, but I, I went back to triples because I didn't want to risk taking anybody else out until I could sort out what's going on with this VR and maybe get a new VR or something of that nature. But yeah, so I'll have this love-hate relationship with Long Beach. I love it because it feels so amazing when you complete a lap on the limit. Man, when you hit all the marks and let the car track out and you can feel it sliding in and out of the corners. Uh, I love it. Uh, the, the, uh, the hate part comes where I'm in a multi-class race and I'm constantly catching GTs and other l &D guys who lack a little bit of racecraft or race etiquette or, 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 or spatial awareness or something like that. And so it takes away from the enjoyment because you're constantly on the edge, you know, looking at what other people are doing because they're overdriving the car or doing a myriad of things that you can tell will either end up causing you to, causing them to spin out and you get collected in the process or something. So that's the hate part. Um, and I've always liked road courses, uh, the traditional old type circuits like Spa and um, Suzuka. And those tracks are amazing, right? Those are probably the best tracks. But I also have an affinity for street circuits or road courses because it forces you to focus because there are walls left and right. And it, it, it makes you feel like you're busy in the car doing something. And of course, the sense of speed is tremendous because the walls are close by and they're flying by at a very, very, very fast rate. And so you get the illusion of speed or the, the sensation of speed on these, uh, on these street circuits. But anyway, I'm, I love sim racing. I uh, really, really, really love sim racing. And maybe that's probably the reason why something I get so frustrated about it because uh, the joy of being able to battle with a fella or several lap after lap after lap, trying to figure out where you have the advantage. And he knows the same thing, so he knows where you're quicker, you know where he's quicker.
quicker. So you try to stay as close to them as possible where he's quicker. And then try to get a draft or, or something. And he knows the same, so it's a, it's a constant battle. Everybody's hitting that mark, hoping that he makes a mistake so I can get to. Hoping I make a mistake so that he can get some breathing. And I've had a few battles like that on track with guys, perhaps, at my level, which is not very high, but good enough for me to have a great enjoyment. Um, I mean, I must have been doing something wrong in the beginning to get up to 3,000 uh, I rating, only to have it uh, plummet since then. But nevertheless, I, I still enjoy the same. And uh, so, yeah, like I said, I, I, I participated in the IMSA uh, season, multi class season, on uh, I racing. And I like the multi class. The, the best thing about multi-class racing is multi-class. The worst thing about multi-class racing is multi-class. <laughs> because with multi-class, you're constantly doing something on track, right? Because there's all across the navigate while fighting against cars in your own class, right? So you might come up with a guy ahead of you and he's four or five seconds ahead. And then he's coming up on the GTs. And of course, how he navigates to the GTs will determine whether that five seconds he's ahead of you remains or extends or diminishes. A lot of times, it would, uh, you know, I have to close the gap because the faster guys will catch GTs in a very, very um, compromising place, so they lose time. Other time, I would, if I was ahead, I would catch GTs and try to make a pass in an area where the other guy can't pass the GT because they go into a very tight section and so they have to tuck it in line. And within that time, I, get, I could pull out a little bit of a gap, you know, to try to stay ahead as best as I can. And so that's the fun thing about multi-class is multi-class. The bad thing about multi-class is multi-class because sometimes at the most inopportune time, you will come up on a GT that um, is, doing, is in his own race, his own battle, and you need to get by quickly because there's a guy coming down and he's closing in quickly and you're trying to maintain a gap and so you get stuck and you lose a lot of time and it affects your overall race but the joy of me um, from the, um, the inconvenience of passing or catching a GT in that knowledge. That's that knowledge of time. I used to drive the Radical and I, I became pretty good at the Radical. In fact, that's how I was able to get up to 3,000. I, I was really, really good driving the Radical. I understood, I understood its nuances. I knew how to drive in and out of the corner. I understood the braking and the SR8. Um, since they came with the SR10, I haven't driven the Radical much. Not that the SR10 is a bad car, but I, I just pivoted from the Radical to the LMP2. And then when the hybrid got released uh, recently, I pivoted to the hybrid. And so I'm still kind of learning the hybrid. I don't know all about its nuances yet. I haven't even had the, my steering wheel buttons map to adjust brake bias and engine maps and differential settings and none of that stuff, right? So I'm just trying to, I'm trying to get some new it before I start to be able to get it. It's a lot of fun to drive. Yeah, so I'm having a good time at Long Beach. Like I said, I'm not pushing hard, just trying to stay in between the white lines. And I'm just trying to get to the end so I could have some points on my, uh, my championship. I am in Division 6, and I think for the moment, I am in Division 6. So yeah, I take this stuff serious. I'm not serious to the point where I lose sleep if I don't finish the race, but serious enough to give me some. Get to go on and see, all right, how this track begins. I compare it to the one before, like uh, Long Beach. This week. Before that, um, we were at, I don't remember which track we were at before. The, yes, yes, before Long Beach, we were at um, Jerez. And that track, I struggled in the beginning, but once I, f I, I figured it out, that was a really, really fun track to drive. It, it was high speed. It was really, 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 really high speed. It was some really, really fast corners. Um, 
and I finally got used to headers and then it was time to go to Long Beach, which is not high speed, which is tight, walls. There's a lot of uh, traction events at Long Beach because you're accelerating out of slower corners. Where at Jerez, I think there was more um, um, high-speed corners and not so many traction events, I think. Yeah, I think or Jerez didn't have as many traction events as Long Beach, which you're accelerating hard out of slower corners. So Long Beach is not as bad. Um, well, it's not bad. And then, of course, next week is Hungary, uh, which is the, another uh, tight circuit. Yeah, one thing with Long Beach is very bumpy in some of the braking areas. And this turn, this corner coming up right here, this hairpin, is really, really tricky. It looks simple, but it's tricky. Full steering lock here. And you're trying to get on the throttle as quickly as you can because it's a long run down to turn one. And anything you lose, anytime you lose coming out of that hairpin, all the way down until you get to the breaking event of turn one. So I find that most of the time that I lose on this track is coming out of turn one. Because I either get the line wrong, I carry too much speed into turn one coming in, and so I can't really make the corner so it runs wide and I have to oversteer to try to get it to turn. And, or I'm not getting on the throttle quick enough because I do that's right. So either way I lose a lot of time. I'm not really heavy on the brakes as I should be worried that the car would spin out on the track. It just feels really, really unstable on the back end and in the braking event. So I have to be very, very genuine my brakes. Almost eggshell on the brakes, so to speak. Is that on eggshells? Uh, uh, yeah, so. And this bit right here, staying as tight on the inside as possible, arriving the curve to get a wide entry here into the final corner. Seem to be one of the better ways to approach it. This guy right here is a double left and right. Yeah, he's a good driver. And we're just having this one. Yeah, so I use um, VRS setups. And I also use this service to try to learn how to drive, drive these, these cars, uh, you know, at a competitive rate. And one of the things about, um, I notice when comparing, analyzing my lap against the VRS uh, benchmark, is that I'm losing time everywhere. So it's not that I'm losing a chunk of time in the first sector and relatively tidy in the second and third sector. No, I'm losing a little bit of time in every single sector, perhaps in every single corner. So it's hard to try to figure out where to gain, right? Because whatever I'm doing wrong, I'm consistently doing it wrong across the entire lap. Because <laughs> when I watch the, um, the, the braking trace, the acceleration trace, the gears that I'm in, uh, perhaps in the line that I've taken, um, it seemed to be similar uh, to VRS, but somehow, uh, I don't know, either I'm not getting on the throttle quick enough, or I, I have no idea, but I'm losing a um, little bit of time everywhere. So whatever needs to be fixed, I guess I have to sort that out within myself to see, well, how can I fix because it's, it's obviously a habit. It's got to be something that I'm doing with turn in, something that I'm doing at the apex, something that I'm doing with braking, something that I'm doing with tracking out. It seems like the entire arsenal of my skill is, is, is consistent to the point where I'm losing time every single corner. Now, I could run consistent lap times. It's not like I run a, let's say a Long Beach, I can run into one so at the beginning of the stint, with uh, 11.6 gallons of fuel, I could run um, low 12, right? You know, 12, 3, 12, 4. About midway through the stint, I could run low 12s, high 11. You know, 11, 8, 11. 
seven, nine. And then towards the end of the stint, I could run, you know, mid to low 11s, never in the 10s. I don't think I could get in the 10s. So having said that, I could run consistent lap time at whatever stage of the stint I'm in. So if I'm in the beginning stage, I could run, I don't know, 12, 3, 12, 4, 12, 5, 12, 3, 12, 4, 12, 5. I could run consistent time. So what I'm doing is, it's not that I'm running at 12, 3, and then I'm running at 13, 6, and 14, 5, and then, then at 12, 5. No, I can run consistently in the 12. So whatever I'm doing wrong, I'm able to replicate it over consistent laps, right? So now I just need to figure out, okay, how do I, what do I change in my driving that will basically correct all the time that I'm losing across the entire lap instead of just one second? Because if it was just sector one, I could say, all right, what am I doing wrong in sector one? Okay, all right, I'm breaking 25 meters too late going into turn one. So I need to break 25 meters closer and see if I can make the turn. What gear am I in going into turn one? I'm in, I'm in gear two, VRS is in, in gear three, so maybe I should try to take uh, go into turn one in third gear. What speed are they carrying to turn one? They're carrying this much speed, I'm a little bit, what, five miles an hour down, so maybe, right, I could do all these different things if it was just sector one. But when it's every corner, every sector, is something overwhelmingly consistent in a bad way, that I'm doing across the entire lap. So if I could figure what that out, that is, I could probably um, shave the time across every one of the lap, every one of the uh, sectors, and not have to focus just on one sector. So I need to figure out what it is I'm doing wrong overall, and then try to correct that. So that's my uh, challenge. I try to see if, if by the time we go back to Long Beach, I'll be able to run in the tens. In the tens. That's the goal. I just want to have a little bit of consistency. Listen. I know I said a lot, so um, I'm going <laughs> to stick a pin here and let the rest of the video play out. So if you guys are um, participating in this journey with me, uh, great. I really appreciate your, your presence here. Um, I'm a source fractal on this, this, this journey of life, this game of life. And this is one of the things that I intend to do as uh, so I to experience this journey, which is sim racing. And I'm not the best at it, but I'm getting better every single day. And my goal for the year, and it's still early days, is to get back to the So I will try to enter into more uh, open server races, perhaps using the Radical again, because I'm, I was pretty adept with the Radical. Perhaps I could find I rating by using the Radical. And when I come to this IMSA series, <coughs> maybe instead of starting at the back, and I think the reason why I start at the back is probably compounding by the I think the reason why I started the back, and I shouldn't know that it's more than anybody else, being that I'm a you know, source fractal, a fractal source, a virtual reality simulation game, I should know better, is that I come into it saying that, alright, I want to qualify at the back because I'm ready. So now think about the mindset behind that reason, right? If I want to qualify at the back or start at the back because I don't want to get the red, I've already set the the vibrational um, reality that ranking is at the top of my mind. So if I go out in the race, then the very thing that I don't want to happen will happen because I set it out there as a possibility. Right? So I need to change that. I need to get into the race, qualify, and see where it is I qualify, and then fight to the I did not want to lose this money, I worked hard for it. And subsequently what happened, I didn't lose the money. 
So it's like the not wanting to do something, if that's the mindset, then the very opposite will happen, right? It will happen because the universe does not understand it understand what your focus is. And if your focus is wrecked, then you will get with this wrecked in your circumstances and experience. What's happening to me here on this 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 um, sim racing. So yeah, sorry for the philosophical explanation of something simple as to say I am getting wrecked because I'm with a whole bunch of dudes in the lower split that lack the ability to drive their car in a consistent manner. That's why I'm getting wrecked. As far as the energetic vibration and frequency behind that, it's irrelevant, right? <laughs> anyway, please like, share, and subscribe. This is Chronicles of a Sim. Oh, yes. You see? You, you, that's exactly what I mean. Nothing. I didn't do anything wrong up to this point in the game. Right? Out of the point in the streets. And that has been the climate of exactly what has been happening for me. I would be doing well to the course of several laps. And then something out of the blue just happened. I come around the corner. No warning. And of course, I just hit the wall because whatever happened earlier seemed to damage the car. And I didn't realize that until I got into turn one when I turn in. There was nothing. There was no turning. So now I realize it's late in the race. Uh, I'm going to finish the race because I came too far now to quit. So I'm going to try to get the car going again and see how it feels. And if it feels good still, then it's far enough in the race where I can still finish it or in the podium spot. That's exactly what I was talking about. Out of nowhere, this guy spun or was just sitting right there on the racing line. And I had no indication that he was there. Because it might have just happened or or maybe my spotter was nowhere, or you know, a yellow flag didn't come up, whatever. Whatever the reason was, you saw exactly what I'm talking about right there. And that's how many, many incidents happen with me in this. It's not necessarily someone just sitting there you know, at the exit of the final corner, a guy would be ahead racing, and then he would lose it, and spin out, and I have no way to and bam, and hit or he would wreck, or rear end me going into the corner. Say, man, I, I, I didn't realize he was going to break so soon, or whatever the case might be, so. So, as you notice, I continue on, because the car still felt a little bit okay, but although I wasn't getting, up, I'm not getting up to 170 plus miles an hour on the straight end, I think that time I topped off at 165. So whatever damage I have to the front end, it's enough to affect the arrow. So it's probably creating more drag. So I'm not able to run the same pace that I was running. Even though it wasn't the greatest, fastest pace, I'm not able to run that pace anymore. So you can see that now in my lifetime. But anyway, please like, share, and subscribe if you like this journey. Um, uh, if, if not, uh, thank you for visiting. And uh, I do hope you come again, but if, if this is not your cup of tea, I understand we all have something that we're passionate about and that we love. For me, sim racing and actually going to the track are two of my passions. And I, like, I also like outdoor activities, you know, going to the park, hiking, um, camping, although I haven't done camping in a long time. I'm, I'm talking camping in the true sense, not uh, glamping as the modern day people call it, but really, really camping. I haven't done that for last sticking my feet in the sand, uh, sun gazing, a few other things that we can find. Now you see my top speed here, 164 miles an hour. I was getting up to maybe 170, 172 at times here. So I'm down about, I don't know, 8, eight 9 miles an hour on the straight. So something is definitely affecting the drivability, or not the drivability, but certainly affecting the um, the, uh, the aerodynamics uh, efficiency. So yeah. Anyway, uh, Chronicles of a Sim Racer. Thank you for joining. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'm going to stick a pin here now in the voiceover parts. And then uh, for those who are inclined to, let you continue to enjoy the, uh, the rest of the race. Thanks again.